Welcome to this guide. Actually, I didn't make a big script, but the video is gonna be long, I feel. So I try my best to explain you as best as I can with my broken English how in the fuck do you increase your damage on the bow. And I want to give you three tips, skills, infos, whatever do you like to call it, how you can increase your damage. There are three important things that you need to upgrade your damage. And the number one is you need a pretty good bow build that I've made on my playlist. I'm gonna link you the playlist. On my case, I'm using that one from the Geismogom speedrun or from the Geismogom showcase I use. It's a middle build. It's not that strong, either not that great, so we can make it great, I guess. So that's the number one. The second uh, one is you need the uh, mentionable skills that I show you. You need to uh, uh, shot type up skill for your bow. In my example, it's uh, Pierce. I'm gonna swap later on to spread bow. So yeah, you need to spread up and pierce up level 3. And also, you're gonna need the bow charge plus because the bow charge plus uh, gives you one more charge level on your bow. It's not important on all bows, maybe on one that already has um, the shot type uh, level 5 or some shit, maybe not. But I guess it's only I'm on bow or some bow that doesn't matter that much, so yeah, always take it. Plus the PS or spread up shot type on the bow on level 3. So yeah, that's the number one major thing. The second one is this little guy over here, looking walking, is James my fucking Palico, because James is a fucking asshole sometimes, but he's pretty good. So yeah, you want to get a cat like this that has like uh, Meowsing Roar, Go Fight Wind, Power Drum, my case it's Flash Bobby and Fero Ferocious. Some of you are asking why you, you are using Felina Fireworks and shit, I'm gonna go deeper into this. Because um, we're gonna work a lot with Endemic Life. So because Endemic Life is fucking broken, I'm gonna show you some routes and shit. Uh, how you can combo trap the monster and shit. So yeah, let me see where the fuck can I swap this fucking moves. Right here. In normal case, uh, you should take a Meowsing Mist, because if a Meowsing Mist, uh, it's RNG, but if a Meowsing Mist gives you like a water explosion, you're gonna do increased damage to the hits of the monster. But the uh, thing is, uh, if you play higher normally, um, also on low normally, and uh, normal monsters, one well, of Meowsing Mist most of the time is enough to blight the monster. But on higher normally, for some reason, it doesn't work for me, or they fix it, I don't. Uh, fucking no, that's why I didn't take it. In normal case, you could also take the lottery box that gives you a kitty nator that makes the monster topple. But in my case, I just take the fireworks because it's uh, it's fucking funny. So it's 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 something different from the playstyle. And once you learn to trap the monster, it, uh, you kind of uh, be consistent on this. So that's why I'm gonna go with this. So yeah, for the skills you want to aim like attack up a melee sentry. In my case, it's attack up as elemental attack up. And yeah, that works. You can do the same to the uh, dog, actually. That should... Uh, so. On that case, you're gonna go the same like this. So yeah, that's the number two that we need. Number three is we need Endemic Life. And on Endemic Life, I mean, uh, there are certain routes you can go to get some uh, buffs to spend a bit of time, like one or two minutes, before you get to the monster that you have some shit to combo the monster. The only maps that are not that good for this route are the Fluted Forest and the Lava Cave. And so far, I haven't found any route where I can say, okay, that uh, could be pretty well to use against the uh, monster. So if you have any good route on the forest or on the caverns, you can tell me that, but uh, else we're gonna start off with the Shrine Ruins. So for Shrine Ruins, you want to set up your camp right here. Because I don't know why would you uh, use the else camp, so yeah. Because most of the uh, buffs, if you can look on the map, are on the 10 and 9. On the 10 you got a water beetle, on the 9 you got an electro beetle. And sometimes when the monsters on the tree, you also got the spider there, so you can use that. The yellow spider I won't use because I don't like it that much. Also, you got, if the monster's on the 13, also you got uh, another spider. So yeah. Wherever you like, you uh, go to this position. Then, you're gonna launch yourself like this. Grab this fucking uh, shit. 
Also, uh, this run and guide is more based on playing a cat. So if you play dogs, you're gonna have a bit less damage, but you have a bit more mobility. But for myself, I like playing this cat because I love cats. So yeah, I love dogs also, but uh, cats are pretty strong on this cat. So yeah. In that case, if you got uh, this two buffs, either the monster is in the 10, in the 6 or in the 3, most of the time in the near. So either you go down, grab the spiders, land the monster to the wall and do a combo, or you just go to the 6 and then you already have like two bugs that you can use to tzitze or to combo the monster. I'm gonna show you some combos and shit later on, but for now I'll just show you the route. So yeah, that's the first route that you can use. On the jungle. Jungle is a bit decent because you can't get much there, but you go to this, then you're checking the spider. Also, not to mention on the underground, uh, there's also another spider. In case the monster spawns in a 10, you can go back to the camp and grab the second spider so you can fuck the monster way hard. But that's only if you play like a triple monsters quest or some shit where the last one spawns. So yeah, you go to this route and then at this point you have a spider and the bug that you can use. And either the monster then is in the 2 or is in the, I don't know, in, my, uh, in the 10. You can go there then and bomb the monster like from this camp. You want to set up this camp here because that works for me. For me it works pretty well. So that's why I do it. So yeah, that's what you can use. Moving on to the next map. Alright, moving on to Frost Eastlands. On Frost Eastlands, if the monster is at the 1, 2 or 4, you can't do much. Because there are not many bugs or shit that you can use. The only thing that you can get is... Let me swap this shit. Uh, you can get the spider at the 4 actually, if you go to this uh, corner. I can show you. It's right there actually. You could get this uh, spider. But the other route I want to go is, uh, go to this camp. Also, you want to set up your Paliku camp at the top. Actually. If you haven't, where uh, Mike has the monkey is. So yeah. Then you're using this. Go to this spot. Go right there. Grab this bug. Go to this. And now uh, you also grab the spider from that route. Yeah, it depends on the case. If the monster is the 6, you can teleport back as if it's on the 9 or the 10, you're already there. And if it's all the 3, 4, 5, and it's a larger monster that has a larger XP or a larger HP bar and shit, you can go also back and grab the spider from the fight. And then you can fight. Also, a mentionable skill I forgot uh, is. You want to have reload speed level 2, by the way, because reload speed level 2 makes that you're when you're loading the coating uh that you are getting the coating autom automatically loaded in so you don't need to press an another, another extra button for frames and so yeah moving on to the sandy plants we go like this into this little little sea whatever lake you whatever i want to call this fucking shit uh, you get the water bug here and then either you go straight to the 5 where the monsters in the 6 or the 5 by the way I would uh, choose to spawn on your side or you can go to this camp after you went to the uh, went to the water beetle then you launch yourself up aim for this direction because on the ground there is a spider that's one route you can uh, take if the monster is like here or if you have a monster like the monkey that is uh, at the top, you can go uh, or you can start off from the camp. Then you go straight there. Go like this, shoot yourself like this, shoot yourself like this. Make a roll, don't fuck the roll up like me and try to take the back. Or some uh, of you were asking, but why you don't teleport to the camp and then go there? Because shooting yourself with the wire bugs on this is way faster. Uh, because you get up to here to the to the marionette spider to take the spider. So that's why you go at the top of this and then shoot yourself around this. 
Because when you go to the second camp, you got to climb up the tower and shit. And that's gonna take way longer than it will take you when you start from the camp. That's why it's, it's way faster. So yeah, then you are here. Then you can go to the 7, go to the 11 or go to the 10 to fuck the monster. It depends on where it is. So yeah. Also pretty mentionable, where the Vulcanas, you can set up a feline camp also. If you know the monster is gonna spawn there, you can do that, of course. It's gonna spend you a lot of time. But yeah, these are the two routes you can go. Of course, you can mix them all together if you have the time. And the uh, spawn of the monster that you can smoke, then you have like two spiders and two bugs or some shit, which is pretty broken. So it can buff you pretty hard. One is the Citadel. I like Citadel speedrunning because it's fucking broken, actually. Because uh, of the oneness, you can go here, grab that bug, for example, if the monster's in a tenor somehow, you grab that bug, and the blast hood also. But um, then you shoot yourself up here. For example, if the monster is on the Camellios area, the Camellios is the mud area. If you smack down a monster in the mud, uh, it's gonna lie way longer on the ground. Which gives you a pretty huge uh, window and high frame window to punish the monster pretty hard. For an example, then you run like uh, this, get the spider that is at the top of here. And then on that case, you could either go to the mud area, smack the monster already in and then combo it. Or you gonna use the teleporter like this, go into the seven and shit and do some shit. Or then you go to this, if the monster is at the top and not in the of this area. For example, if it's not in the middle. I mean, okay, if you're with four players, you can do it. It would give you all a huge advantage. So yeah. Then you shoot yourself up like this. Go like this. Take the fucking spider. Then you go like this. Shoot yourself up like this. Go like this. Like this. This, like this, and then like this. Then you're gonna take the Tanabi. So you, at this point you have like two fucking spiders, one mud beetle and one fucking Tanabi. beetle. What do you want more? You're fucking OP right now, this one. Then you can go to the monster wherever it is. Using a teleport or some shit. These were some routes you can take sometimes. It depends on the monster spawn. Sometimes you can combine them together. As I said, on the lava caverns and forest, I don't have tried out any routes so far. Because most of the time of this, it's uh, important that you have the spawn near the monster. That's basically all you need. Sometimes on the lava caverns, if the monster spawns at the top, you can take a spider from the underground. On the lava caverns, it's more important to use like the volcanoes and shit that are on the wall. Like the blue and red signs that you can use where you can smack the monster against it and it gets some damage. Like the waterfall or the lava fall. But yeah, in the forest, you most of the time have the uh, uh, box that you can use on the wall. So yeah. Let me pick a monster, which one I can say I would not take an afflicted because it is gonna take way too long to uh, do with an afflicted. So let me check a barrier actually to the last example. Let me adjust a bit. Bow is paralyzed, uh, it's not a mandatory. Um, but uh, most of the bows are having that, so you can make use of that most of the time. Maybe not pierce bows, not all pierce bows as paralyzed and shit, but most of the spread bows are having a lot of type that can shoot. Paralyzed. So yeah, for that one I'm gonna check the... So, the game plan for the barrier of is... Um, I'm gonna check the water beetle. I'm grab this one. Then I go to this camp, take the spider and take the bug. That's all I take. In my case, I don't go for the spider at this. So the game plan is gonna be, I'm gonna water blight him at the beginning. Then I'm gonna use, uh, then I'm gonna stun him with the bow, because the bow can stun with the absolute power shot. After he uh, got up, I gave him a paralyze. After the paralyze, I can give him a ride, actually. I would, I would say we would go for a ride. And after he, when he's in the right stance, we can try Thunder Blight him, maybe? And then do traps or shit, I will see. Can be also very, it's not accurate, it depends on the monster. But that's how you do it. Depends on the monster and depends on the RNG. Oh, 
also when it comes to monsters like uh, this monsters like this you can also make them topple like Nagakuga uh, if you shoot their uh, hands for example yeah. I guess it's uh, it's close to be there whatever Was not that planned actually because he had less H HP than I expected. But okay, um, gonna do another monster. It looks like it doesn't work because he has the less HP. Maybe I can get him in a future actually. But I know because I should have done Paralyze now. Then shoot, shoot. Then a right into the trap. Still a monster. So sometimes you can make monsters topple like. Nagakuga, or like, what the fuck I didn't got the food, like Nagua Barry off, like, for example, on the hands. I'm also using Motor like any game, by the way, so don't wanna worry. Worry. But yeah, to make them extra trouble, so that's basically a start of it. You can either you start off with some traps for the monster, and trap spam it a bit at the beginning, or you are starting off with the uh, topple on the parts of the broken monster parts. I'm gonna uh, find out the joy for you all the rotation for yourself. But with uh, combos like this, monsters like the Astra somehow are a fucking joke because you can run them down. If you get them like this, you get like a risen to Astra somehow in this fucking match. Or any other monster like a Godo or some shit. In my case, this time I think I'm gonna start off with a trap, but I don't have a trap. No. Preparation mode. Do a certain amount uh, of damage to the monsters. I'm gonna do a full double. And in my case, I'm gonna go with the paralyzed before, I guess. Okay. 
can go if you use stun go uh, slugger you can get the uh, stun most of the time pretty fast so if the stun is taking you feeling like the stun is taking a bit longer and of course go and paralyze him. for now like we are waiting to get him in raid Get us doing the flash bomb back. We go for the uh, second stun. Because the uh, electro bug, or the thunder bug, makes it that the monster is getting the stun pretty. Uh, so if we have like hammer players and they stun the monster a second or third time, we can go for a fourth one. And also I forgot the water bucket at the beginning. It leaves the area and ignores my spider. I like this kind of shit. That was not planned actually, so yeah. But whatever, okay, we go for it. Now we got the Garen going, which I also gonna use by the way sometimes. It's not needed every time, but uh sometimes you can use it. Also, there's an Alternation bug lying on the ground, which could be used to work well. So, that boy is smacking. Yes. So, there's the bug. You can access it pretty well. The barrier is in a trap, which means. Uh, He's gone, uh, well, when, uh, we can water bucket now. Oh, it wasn't that I don't know why it's gone up. He's gonna top it for sure now. And then we're gonna water bucket. In normal case, you could do a trap then on him. You can't uh, trap a normal, you can catch him normally once, but you can trap it. Ah, okay. Sag. That was pretty unplanned. If you would not fuck up like me and play bad, please get it We already had six minutes, played two or three minutes of this even bad. Played it's pretty fucking bad. Um but we got uh very often. That's what that's what I said. Just by combining the items we did a pretty decent time on this. If you would not have died, um we could be way fast. And also we had the feline fireworks also ready. Which we could use, for example, uh, where the Garangoim finishes his move. And then we could drop it and make another top it actually. And we will have like two minutes. So this would be clearly a four minute run on the Fictive Barrel. That has like 80, 90 k HP or something. So yeah. Just by using basic utilities. And if we would be like in four players, of course it is gonna have a bit uh, more HP, but the chance that you cut on this uh, with like four players is a bit lower. Because you're not gonna get focus all the time and shit. So yeah. That was an example showcase of how to you or how you can increase your damage, for example. I guess I can try if I can go to this way important because Diablos is pretty AIDS. Actually. Okay. 
Okay, whatever. Yeah, let us fix this. Alright, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'm gonna uh, answer that to you, of course. Thank you for watching. It was just a quick showcase of something unclear. Uh, is unclear or shit? Uh, ask it in the comments. That's all fine. Because my English is not cool, so I try my best. So yeah, have a good one. Use the endemic life. Use the cats. Make sure to combine them. For example, stack the stuns, stack the para, stack the topple. Do a ride into a trap or some shit. Uh, and yeah, and if you do right, make sure to slam the monster always mostly in the water box because uh, you will you will get the stun way faster. So only slam it into a thunder wall if you maybe ride it into a water, then shoot shoot it, then slam it uh, for a second stun or some shit. So yeah, have a good one and thank you for watching.